Okay, here we go. Last first part of this chapter is just my dad waxing philosophically about why life sucks. All right. Hopefully something starts to happen soon. One late afternoon, just as the sun was trying to make its last impressions on the gray clouds, an echo of thunder could be heard in the distance. As I walked, was walking down the alley behind my son's house. The lady next door, a lovely, friendly, elderly woman, was painting her garage door. Her name was Na my dad. Again, you know, this dude was living in my house while I'm working, and he's out wandering the neighborhood making friends with all my neighbors. I'll tell you why this is a problem later, um, but I'm sure he'll get to it. He didn't even bother learning this lady's name, Na Nancy. We called her Naked Nancy, actually, because she... Um, would garden naked in her backyard and our window for our kitchen while we were washing dishes overlooked her her freaking backyard and this lady would be, you know she had to have been in well into her 60s late 60s and she would be butt ass naked out there like playing with tomato plants and potatoes and stuff and uh, she was a little bit of a hoarder stuff all over the place in her backyard um so yeah, she was a character. Nice, nice, super nice lady, but <laughs> uh, she's a French teacher. She's taught French, I guess, in high school, but she was retired. All right, lady next door, a lovely, elderly, old, she had kind of frizzy hair, white woman. Um, anyways, just picking a picture for you, since he didn't. <laughs> Friendly elderly woman was painting her garage next door. So this woman's the same age as him. <laughs> what a dick. I stopped to see if I could help. I had noticed her several times during the previous several weeks. After a few minutes of small talk, oh, he did give her a name. Nancy asked me if I will, if I, it was I who had been playing piano the night before in Keith's back room. She commented that she had found the music lovely and wondered whether it was a recording. Conversation turned to life and art and music. I told her I had a CD of my own music, and I told her I would be happy to get her a copy. In a few minutes, I returned with one, although reluctant to part with the few remaining copies I had left I assume he intended to say there when you don't have anything to show for 58 years of living it's hard okay so he was a bit younger than her it's hard not to get jealous of others just wishing you had a place to live just can be pretty painful well don't be a shithead um, I don't know what to tell you make better choices invest wisely be consistent be somebody people can count on um, the more you do for people the more they do for you that's how life works I knew I had to keep these feelings in check, but I had been with so little for so long. <laughs> I knew I had to believe that something good would happen again. I did have a gig next Saturday, and that was good news. I wondered how long a bad luck lasts. It wasn't bad luck, brother. Butter, you, brother? Dad? This was not bad luck. This is, this is totally a situation of your own creation. I wondered how long bad luck lasts, and whether there is such a thing as bad luck. I had been living day to day, sometimes hour to hour, for over two years, and I hoped a light would soon appear at the end of the tunnel, and that it wouldn't be another train. The problem with depression is it's relentless. It comes in waves, punctuated with calm swells, the white frothing surf tearing you up, then the riptides of helplessness pull you back down deep wa into w deep water of despair. You, you back float in lovely calm until the next wave pours over you in a choking splash of fear, flipping you upside down. You lose your equilibrium on tranquility and stability. I mean, this guy, this guy spent most of his life just like hanging out on the beach, swimming in the ocean, which is where this metaphor for, from him is coming from. So cry me a river, beach bomb. Um, even when the life jackets of security seem to be holding your head above water, <clears throat> a mouthful of salty water chokes you and the steam goes up your nose. Looking around at the seemingly happy people on shore and you see someone who seems to have it better than you do. It's an illusion. It's not an illusion. We do have it better than you. It's an illusion. The invisible sand fleas are always there, biting unseen, but nonetheless tormenting the beach bathers. You know, this is the kind of thing that, that um, and I love my dad, but he was a loser. And um, this is the kind of thing that le losers tell themselves. Like, he would say things like, um, you know, when you go and visit somebody who seems like they're doing better, you look in their cabinet and you'll see all the medication, the medications that they're on they don't have it that great they are doing pretty good because they can afford medication which you can't at this point in your life 
Um, so these are the kinds of lies that, that people who have made bad decisions tell themselves to convince themselves they don't really have it so bad. And, um, you know, whatever you got to tell yourself to get through the day. Unless you've experienced those severe, these severe mood swings, the feeling is difficult to describe. Money does not protect you. I'll, I'll side comment. Money does not protect you from mental health problems or depression or anxiety or any of those things. Um, but it does help you deal with them better and it does reduce some of the stressors associated with not having money. So it helps. With depression, the mind doesn't work in the normal way if there is such a thing as normal. But the feeling of aloneness can be overwhelming. I've seen shows about addiction, drug, drugs, alcohol, and rehabs. I've heard the same stories over and over again in an attempt to show that the problems we're, we have are universal to our condition. Yet I still feel totally alone. My experience, unique. I work the steps, thinking I'm making progress, and I might just have a grasp on my condition. Only run into a dark box canyon of despair. Just when I think I'm getting better, possibly getting a handle on my emotion, I realize I'm still insane. Or is it those around me who are insane? No, it's definitely you. It's definitely you. Some people are, it's a spectrum. Some people are, are closer to sane. You actually want to be somewhere in the middle. You don't want to be too sane because then you get depressed. And you don't want to be too insane because then you're not aware of what's going on around you. Um, you want to be uh, blissfully delusional, but still aware of um, risks and imminent danger. So I don't, I don't know. This is personal opinion. No wonder I drank. You drink for a lot of reasons, not just because you're you started drinking when you were twelve, so not related to your depression. In fact, your depression is probably a result of all your drug use and bad decisions you've made. No wonder I smoked pot every day for four, over forty years. It was my buffer to the harsh reality of life. And the clincher is, I still couldn't handle all of it. Well, if you don't deal with the core behaviors that are leaving, leading to your decision-making processes and all the problems that you have, um, medication is not going to help you, never mind drinking and drugs. Um, but any sort of medication, if you're not augmenting it with behavioral therapy where you're learning how to you know, handle problems and get good coping skills and how to calm yourself down and um, some of these other things that are like critical to life, the drugs aren't going to help. The medication's not going to help. I don't know what to tell you. Under my belt, having worked the steps and no pot, no booze, no coke, and really no desire to use, I still was as, as insane as when I was gut using. Maybe more. Okay, what does Nancy have to do with any of this? With no shield as a barrier for the pain, the truth is I still was fighting for the bright light of real life. Uh, Rosie Hugh, I lived on that pal for so long I thought it was normal. Oh, for the love of God, get back to an actual story, please. The sad thing was, I was feeling more inadequate than I had ever for all my years of addiction. Was I that broken? Could I ever be happy and function on a real level? Or was I, or was how I had lived most of my life the only way for me? The only way to get through the insanity I saw life as? Was I smarter than most as I had always thought? Or was I just a mindless drunk only drawing on my own will to keep my st sinking life craft on the seas of despair, only with a matter of time until I drowned. I mean, he was smart, but um, only in certain ways. He was not, um, didn't understand social relationships and empathy. He did not have those skill sets. So, sh clever, he thinks he was um, pulling a fast one on people. But the th reality is, is most people, when you think you're pulling a fast one on them, they're really just taking note of you being a piece of shit and um, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me kind of thing. For most people, they don't bother um, confronting someone when they get screwed over by them. They just let it go and move on with their lives and then tell all their friends about you. So what ends up happening over time is you get socially isolated, which is what happened with my father. Um, everybody knew his game by the time he was 60. Keeping distracted seemed to work. Time alone, running my problems over and over in my head, and not the medicine to achieve peace of mind. Focusing on the little things outside myself might be the answer. Maybe self was the devil I had to avoid. I don't even know what any of that means. He just doesn't want to be him anymore, which is actually a good thing, because who he was was really self-absorbed and, like I said, narcissist. Narcissist sociopath, so maybe being himself wasn't a good thing. 
But how do you not think about your own problems when they loom over you constantly like a dark winter day, cold and dead? Well, you focus on the little things. That's part of the 12-step programs. My mind was running like an engine with no resistance to govern it. I needed to keep it simple, slow down, and downshift. This had always been part of my dilemma. All or nothing. Manic depression, a Jimi Hendrix song played in my, my, my memory. I mean, if you've never heard Manic Depression, it's a great song. I couldn't get the words out of my head. If I could balance myself inside broke or homeless, it wouldn't matter what success I ever achieved or what woman I found myself in bed with or thought I loved. The more I twisted my head to fit my situation, the more confused I became. I needed to heed these cliches. Turn off your mind, relax, and float downstream. Let go and let God. Keep it simple, stupid. Take it easy. I mean, mostly you just got to learn to, you know, when you're you start to perseverate, which is the what it's called when you cannot let something go and it keeps you awake at night. And everybody's had that um, thing that they think they said that was wrong or the mistake that they made that they shouldn't have made. And um, they feel like people around them think less of them as a result of that. That's perseveration when you're overly focused on some, um, you know, shortcoming or risk that uh, you don't have any control over anymore. That's... That arrow already left the bow, so to speak, and um, it'll kill you if you don't uh, let it go. All right, it doesn't. It didn't matter as long as I had my life ring. I don't know, life ring. The problem was the life ring I had in my hands said HMS Titanic. I, I guess he's he's mixing metaphors and things here. I guess. Um, on another day, I became a new person, a whole new set of emotions, feeling on top of the world. Inside my head, as all the answers were there, knowing I could and would prevail. This is a common thing with drug addicts and mentally ill people is that when they first wake up in the morning, they feel the best they're going to feel the entire day. And then it's kind of like a slowly boiling pot as the day goes on and they get progressively more irritable, crazy, um, and unreliable. And um, yeah, catch them early in the morning and then avoid them in the evenings. This duality scared me. They become more compulsive in the evening. This is true for everybody, but it's more pronounced in the mentally ill and uh, drug addicts. So, this duality scared me. The seemingly opposite change of attitude, fear gone, gone in my life. It had always, it had been this way for as long as I could remember. The oneness to the pain and swelling grew. When I couldn't move my fingers, I made the wise decision to go to the hospital. Georgie was not happy with my attitude and the impending bill, as we never had any sort of insurance. God, that even shocks me. I, I, I guess it never really occurred to me that through my entire childhood, we never had any insurance. My whole childhood. Fascinating. I guess that's obvious now. He was a musician and she was, I don't know, a sec secretary or a waitress most of the time when I was a kid. So I guess we never did have insurance. Wow. What does this have to do? He is just rambling here. And what does this have to do with Nancy? At the emergency room, the doctors told me I would I had common as a fight bite, a laceration of the hand from hitting someone in the mouth. A human mouth is full of worse type of germs. The infections always cause more damage than the punch did to the victim. What is she? What are he even talking about? Who did he punch in the mouth? With my arms strapped to some sort of board and rubber tourniquets. Tying off my blood flow, the nurses and attendants holding long silver roach clips pulled back the skin around the injury. The once seemingly small cut was now a three and a half inch hole in the back of my hand. No blood flowed inside. I could see my bones, the tendons, and all the vital small workings of my hand. Luckily, there was not much damage, but a complete clean cleaning was necessary to stop any possibility of more infection. As I looked inside my hand, realizing this was my livelihood and how intricate and precise it looked, my stomach turned. How could I have been so stupid to hit him with my hand? Next time I would use something else, maybe a microphone stand. What is he even talking about? It's almost like a part of the JD and the Love Bandits got, like chapter got moved into this, maybe, into this later chapter uh, accidentally. This wasn't the last visit to the emergency room while with the Love Bandits. On my last night, what is going on here? 236? Two, There's pages missing. 233. 236 233 to 236 so there's like three pages missing in this version of this 232 
3, 236. Okay. Uh, on the Kim New Person, Fear Gone in My Life. Where's the book? Let me find the book. And I'll find those pages to see what is actually missing here. find it. I'll let you know. <laughs> 